Folks, today what we're gonna show you might void your warranty. In fact, it will probably void your warranty, but it's pretty exciting at the same time. I just wanna say that none of our sponsors have endorsed this solution. If that doesn't get you excited about watching the video, nothing will. Let's get started. Folks, what we're showing you right here is the limb saw on a 1025R. I told you the last time I used the limb saw that this would not work. And it shouldn't. But let's see this. I'm running at an idle. Maybe an idle's not enough. Look at that. If you're not intrigued, you should be. Let's do another limb and I'll tell you about it. This 1025R has over seven gallons per minute, maybe upwards of eight gallons per minute available to the limb saw on the front third function. That's right. A stock one has three and a half gallons per minute available. We have found some juice here, guys. By now, you've got to be asking, how is this working? How can this be doing this? Yeah, we've got a solution here on this particular 1025R. It's not my 1025R. We drove all the way to Arkansas from Indiana to see this solution. This solution is available from hydrosplus.com. You can see the link in the description right here. The solution has two pieces to it. It's going to be a little complex. Stick with me. The first piece is a flow divider. Now the tractor already had a flow divider, but this one is different. All of these subcompact tractors have only one hydraulic pump. You have to get into the bigger tractors. For instance, the 2032, 2038Rs have two separate hydraulic pumps, one for the steering, one for the implements. This one and all the other subcompacts have only one hydraulic pump. As the fluid is pumped out of the hydraulic pump, it gets diverted into two different ways, it gets divided into two different ways, one going to the steering and the other going to the implement. So this solution is a more advanced flow divider, to use my terms, and it allows you to take the output of the pump and control how you divide it. The inventor of this solution has determined that we don't need quite as much flow for the steering and instead we can divert that flow to help us with the implement. So that's part one of the solution, is a, essentially a, an adjustable flow divider. The second part of the solution, if you choose it, is an upgraded pump. It fits in the same uh, compartment as the existing hydraulic pump. It's a little bit longer, maybe three quarters of an inch longer and it's offered in two or three different uh, ratings uh, all the way from eight gallons per minute total all the way up to nine and a half there may at some point even be a 12 gallon per minute solution yeah this is asking for a lot from a 1025r but it's pretty exciting too now remember this will likely void your warranty so it's something to consider as we go along in this episode, we'll talk a little about uh, some of the issues, the practical issues that might come up using this solution. Folks, this is Kevin from Hydros Plus. He's the inventor of this solution. Oh. Yep. You have to make some of that yellow show on it so that it puts a little, okay. a little of the weight on it. Hey, why don't you tell us a little about this solution? What made you decide that you wanted to improve the hydraulics on a one series? You know, like a lot of the, the viewers here, uh, kind of got bitten by the, the small compact tractor bug. Started with a 2210, went to a 2305. Now I'm here at the one series, just kept upgrading. But one of the things that I really hated, I have a smaller lawn than this is my parents' property. One of the things I didn't like is to get just function that, that I think was acceptable, you really had to run almost wide open throttle. Uh, so I did that for a little bit, ultimately decided that I, I wanted to try to improve the hydraulic performance. And 
uh, actually found on Green Tractor Talk, somebody had already asked the question, well, could you put a 20, 25 R pump on uh, the 1025, would that help? Okay, uh, so the 2025 R pump is a different pump than the 1025 R pump. Right, same bolt pattern. It's actually about a millimeter thicker, and you get uh, just about three quarters to one gallon per minute more on the 2025 R pump than the 1025 R pump. Okay, so what is the 1025 R pump rated at, just for some numbers here? Well, so a lot of us use tractordata.com as, as our uh, source of truth because it's hard to find this in the documentation. And tractor data will actually tell you it's closer to six and a half. Um, as I got into all of this, I, I invested in a, uh, in a flow meter. And what, what you can get out of a 1025R at wide open throttle, about 3,400 RPMs is about 7.2, 7.25. That's with the stock pump, 7.25, mm -hmm. okay. Yep. And so uh, with the 2025R, you're right above eight. So okay. you, you, you add almost a gallon per minute. Okay. And then with my biggest pump, you're right at nine and a half gallons per minute. Okay, so nine and a half is the largest one you are marketing at this. That's right. At this point, hey, I've, I'm I'm pushing him on a bigger one. Hey, <laughs> go big or go home, right? <laughs> so, but even with the stock pump, you can improve the flow a little bit. How do That's you do right. that? So, um, the way it's set up is to actually split the flow of the pump evenly. Okay. Half goes to the steering half goes to the implement. So you're at three and a half-ish uh, gallons per minute stock. So if you look at the steering cylinder, we're talking about something that is a very small uh, ram. And, and that's the first thought was, do you really need three and a half gallons per minute to, to push that around? I, I wouldn't think so. Right. Uh, did some research, confirmed you really wouldn't need that much. So I started on the path of, you know, how could you push more to the implements, less to the steering. Okay. Uh, the flow divider that comes on the tractor actually has the PTO switch in it integrated as well, but it's it's set to go 50-50. Okay. Um, and, and there's a valve in there that you know I considered trying to figure out could you change that valve out, but in some of the testing I did, I found that you can't even really push more than about seven to eight gallons per minute through that flow divider because these flow dividers, if you do the research. You know, they're rated for, a lot of times they're four and five gallon per minute, then they jump up to 10 and 12. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that I have uh, as part of my kit is rated for 30 gallons per minute. Okay, so you've added an additional flow divider. That's right. So the stock flow divider is still there. That's right. And still being used? It is still being used because the PTO switch is integrated. Okay. So if you were to try to bypass that completely, you would lose PTO function. Okay, so this will make it a little easier to install for a DIY installer because they're just adding an additional flow That's divider right. on the front. By the way, if you want to have any uh, uh, more insight into how this is installed, uh, you can go to Kevin's YouTube channel. It's uh, Hydros Plus That's on right. YouTube. And you can also go to his website, hydrosplus.com. That'll kind of get you to all those videos as well, right? That's right. By the way, use code TTWT for a 5% discount on anything you buy there. So. I've got this flow divider. Now I'm steering, uh, steering more flow away from the steering, you might <laughs> say. Um, what kind of flow can we see with the stock pump and only uh, adding that flow divider? It's stock, it's a six, three and a half to 3.6. Uh, when you jump up just with the flow divider, you're pushing close to five. Okay. Or a little over five actually. So without any change to the pump, with just the flow divider change, we can get up to five gallons a minute. That makes a meaningful difference in some areas that we want to play with in a minute. Right. Probably still not enough to run the limb saw. So in this case, we needed to get a bigger pump yet. But because you have this additional flow divider, you can adjust that such that all of this additional flow from the new pump goes to the implement side. And it's really by design, because the flow divider that we have is, is called a priority flow divider. The one that's on the tractor is proportional. So when you add additional flow, once you've set it, every drop goes to the implement circuit. Okay, so you're really not adjusting a percentage of the flow to the steering, you're ad adjusting a set GPM. That's right. We're to saying, the look, steering. no matter what you have, give it one and a half to two gallons per minute. So at idle, you, you're giving two, and two gallons per minute, uh, whatever it's adjusted for, or at wide open throttle, two gallons per minute. Okay, so I think that gives us some, something that we need to test here on the Hydros Plus proving grounds right here in Arkansas is, does the steering really work? So I'm gonna, I, I don't, I've, gotta, I've gotta think about some ways that we can 
stress the steering, and I'm not sure. Do you have any ideas on that? Well, there's a lot of different terrain around here. Do you see any potential weaknesses with your solution? Well, I've got to say no to that. It's just going to be better, but I That's think That's the guy that sells it. it. Let me try. <laughs> I know of a weakness. I'm concerned. We talked about the warranty void and, and all that. My concern is heat. We're going to have a lot more hydraulic flow. My concern is that we'll get this thing heated up, uh, to get the, the oil so heated that it won't work. Do you have any thoughts about that? So one of the things that, that is an advantage to the pumps that I offer is one of them is equivalent to the 2025R, which is a lot of the same tractor here, a lot of the same plumbing. So what I would say to that is I feel like that solution has really been tested by deer, you know, by proxy. The nine and a half gallon uh, solution has only been tested by me. Uh, what I'm seeing is a very slight increase in heat over a test, test that run an hour at 2,500 RPMs. So definitely it creates a little more heat. Um, that does mean that, you know, if you were to get to an overheated situation, you could get there faster with, with a higher uh, gallon per minute pump. Yeah. Now, one thing that I might say, uh, based on some experience with other tractors, uh, to my knowledge, the Deer 1 series is the only subcompact tractor that has an oil cooler up in front of the radiator. The other brands of subcompact tractor uh, typically have this fan right in the middle, like your old 2210 had. Yep, that's right, in right? The and, and then as soon as you run a stick up there, you, you, you tear Both off Both of the, mine uh, had no fan blades. No fan <laughs> blades at all. So That was the only cooling that happened to the entire transmission. With this machine, we do have an oil cooler. So if this is gonna work without overheating on any subcompact tractor, it'll be a one series, that's I right. believe. While it's, it's undetermined as of yet, whether you can mow all day long or, or run uh, the backhoe all day long without overheating, what you've seen so far has indicated that it's just a, a few degrees difference. Right, and, and you have to think about the tra tractor holistically. This is one of, you know, you mentioned two pumps and what you meant, there was a st steering pump and a implement pump. There's actually a hydrostatic pump on this as well. And it's about twice the size of this implement pump, even the, the one that I offer. So. When you think about the overall flow gain uh, across you know, the total hydraulic capacity of the tractor, the percentage is not uh, as drastic as it would be just for the single pump. Okay, so you're introducing a, a, another variable that I, I hadn't understood. So you're saying that the hydrostatic pump is somewhere in the neighborhood of, I don't know, 10 to 15 GPM? Uh, it's an 18 cc pump, so it's about 16 and a half gallon per minute. Okay, so, and it's all sharing the same reservoir, the same, same reservoir. oil. Same oil cooler, yep. That does make a difference. So we're talking about raising maybe the rear pump by two, three gallons per minute total. Yeah. And and of, of all the total pump flow in the system, that's maybe 20%. Right. It's not as drastic as it seems maybe on paper. Is yeah, it, because- If you just talk about that one pump. The actual implement flow is doubling. Right. At least. Uh, so so the results is much more than the, than the actual additional flow that's, that's right. occurring here. Folks, if you haven't seen the limb saw before, it's available at limbsaws.com. That's plural. You have to go to the site that's limbsaws.com. Use code TTWT for a 5% discount. It's less than $2,000, really not bad at all, in my opinion. It's a lot of money, I realize, compared to a regular chainsaw, but that was way up there, Kevin. Now, this typically won't work on a 1025R. In fact, I tried it on Johnny 2, 2038R, and I did not get it to work. Although I'm more and more motivated all the time to try again. <laughs> I'm running a 2400 RPM right now, and it does catch once in a while. By catch, I mean that the chain stops once in a while at 2400 RPM. So it can spin when there's no uh, resistance on it, but sometimes with this brand new sharp chain on it, it, it actually catches at 2400 RPM. When we're running a full throttle, we're not seeing that uh, getting stopped. We need to find a really big limb to try to see if it, get, it can handle that. Kevin has the idle set extra low on this machine, so this would be more stress than normal. Um, we're at, I don't know, 1,200 RPMs. Steering feels quite normal to me. Let me go up to 1,500 and this would be normal idle right here, 1,550. It feels identical. 
so I'm not noticing any change. Yeah, this feels just like normal. I really don't know what else I could do to test to say that we're under uh, supplying the steering circuit. I, it seems to be fine. Now from our last episode, we learned that if we cut twice, we won't have as much uh, of the uh, stripping of the bark down the tree. We can't do an undercut just because of the way this saw is made, but we can cut uh, the limb twice so it's not as heavy. Right I expect we'll need every bit of full throttle to cut this larger branch. We just have to try to keep the saw from getting pinched. As long as I see sawdust coming out of there, I know it's doing good. Now, a lot of you are probably asking about this high flow pump and this uh, new flow divider. What's it going to do for capacity? Is it going to raise my loader capacity or is it, you know, what's it going to do? Well, Increasing the hydraulic flow by itself will have no impact on the loader capacity. Capacity is controlled entirely by pressure, and flow controls the speed. So that's, well, there's your basic hydraulics right there. Wow. Neam, what do you think of this? It cut beautiful. <laughs> I didn't ever think it cut so big, and it is. It cut that, that. I'm impressed. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like cutting a tree <laughs> yeah. horizontally. Let me go get the block of wood over here and show you. <laughs> Are I you can sure you can believe. carry it? I don't know if I can because it's big. <laughs> oh. That's a tree trunk. That's a tree trunk. That's a tree. That's not just a limb. That's a tree. <laughs> yeah. So what kind of tree is that? Oak. That's an this, oak? This is an oak. Yeah. Look that at. is really dark looking yeah. wood. Yeah, beautiful oak. It's probably, it's definitely north of 100 years old. Yes. I would say. Yeah. On that chunk. You know what I'm impressed with is that this little tractor is running it and running it effortlessly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is transformative of, of the little tractor. Yeah, you can tell by the sound of the engine, you know, especially at 3400 RPMs. It's not put, it's not taxing the engine. Of course not. Yeah. yeah. Not not like, you know, I wondered what it would do, you know, when, when you put that much, you know, I can do it with the backhoe, but when you put it directly to a, a, a hydraulic motor, you know, what would that be? Yeah. And you really yeah. don't even hear much of a change in, in tone. So I think we're touching really the tip of the iceberg here. We can run a seven gallon per minute pump with no problem with a 1025R. I'm, I'm sorry I keep repeating this to folks uh, watching this because it's stunning to me that we can do it. Now, I'm a, I'm a little concerned about the heat if we were to do this continually, right? Now this saw, you, you don't, as you can see, you don't run the saw continually at all. So it's, it's right. kind of a perfect match for this type of solution, right? You just run the saw a little bit um, and then move and then run it again, move a little bit. It might be a, a little bit different if we were running some sort of a continuous flow attachment like a hydraulic mower or maybe a hydraulic uh, uh, power rake or some other right. continuous attachment. We might have more heat issues. Thing, things like this, post hole diggers, um, you know, some of, the, some of the other saw options that you might have are really intermediate. So I would expect it to be more like loader use where, you know, you pick something up and then you carry it for a ways and then, you know, use it again. I want to try this thing with the backhoe. Yeah, you're going to love it. So Kevin, we're here on your dad's property and we've called the 811 Utility Locate and they've made a bullseye Always. right that's here. Exactly right. This is where we want to dig and this is where all the utilities are for the entire house, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's where we need to dig. Okay, well let's just dig it up, not worry about it. It's his house. Yeah, I mean, I don't live here anymore. <laughs> and never will at this rate. Right, no. <laughs> I, think the, I think the tree cutting might have got us. Uh-oh. <laughs> Kevin, this is the this is the whole reason that you that you implemented this hydraulic solution, right? Yep. Was this is the inspiration for why I thought it, we really needed more hydraulic flow. Okay. So I've uh, I'm not even running the tractor wide open throttle at this point. Yep. 20, 2300. Okay. Now I typically don't run a wide open throttle. At least I got in the habit of not doing so on the old 260 backhoe. Yep. Because it was so jerky. But this backhoe works so much more smoothly that we can probably crank it up a little bit and I can probably still control it. Yeah, yeah. So you, you're telling me you want more power? 
More power. Just crank it all the way up. Why not? Wow. So when, when we said more power, we didn't really mean more power. We meant more speed. <laughs> right? Again, with, with this uh, improved hydraulic solution, we're not getting any more capacity, are we? We're just getting more speed. And wow, it is more speed. Yeah. Amazing. I'm just joking about the utilities, guys. This is an area that Kevin's dad marked out for us that he knew it would be safe to do. So that's why we're digging here. You got some nice black soil on top here. We may have burned something here at one point. I don't remember. Oh, maybe that's what's going on. Okay, what, what do you think I should be noticing? Well, I can, as watching you, it seems like you're very, very smooth with, you know, all the functions. And really, you picked it up a little quicker. I, I thought you might be a little bit jerky at first, but uh, I'm not seeing that. Well, it is interesting because when I get on a big backhoe, a real backhoe that's got a lot of flow, I'm not very good at it. Yeah. And I think the reason I'm not very good at it is because I exaggerate the controls on this one, mm -hmm. or on my 260B, right. to be able to get the job done. And on one that's that's got plenty of flow, it, I, I'm, I'm too much exaggeration. Right. And I jerk it everywhere and I can't control it. So but I was afraid with this one that I would have that problem, that I wouldn't be able to control it. Yet. No, this is nice. The thing that I notice, I'm seeing that you're doing, is as you're going over, you're positioning to d dump where you want to dump. Yeah. At stock flow, uh, I tend to kind of take it to where I want to dump it and then dump it. I can't start, I can't have a fluid motion. Okay, yes, exactly. Exactly. I'm bringing it up. Bring it while up. I'm turning. And then, and instead, of, instead of jerky, it's very smooth. You might be able to kind of do two functions at once. But you have to think one function at once. You know, how do I describe that? But with this one, you can you can freely do. So you're doing three at a time here. Yeah. Wow, this is this is working very well. Now, even in the stock configuration, a lot of people make fun of these little backhoes, and I'm not sure I understand why. I, that we can do a lot of digging. That's right. With Dig that hole with size. a shovel and tell how long it takes you. Yeah, exactly. It beats a shovel. You know, it gets hard pretty quick down there. Yeah. It's kind of an orange-red play on down there. Yes, it, it's operating much easier. I feel like it's even smoother with the extra flow because it doesn't stop unexpectedly. You know, I think maybe you're right. Because whenever whenever you run out of flow, it's going to stop one of the functions. Yeah. And, and this so way, I, found I don't this have to, to go be a nearly fully open right. to make it happen. Right. You can just ease it open. You've got enough flow to send the two or three circuits at once. Yeah. Right there, I'm doing two or three at once. Yeah. I was doing three at once right there, I could tell. So I could be... And now I'm dumping and moving and... Wow. That's very nice. Now I'm getting into his bricks and a bunch of other stuff that he's buried a long time ago. <laughs> I probably better not go any deeper. Now, I had someone ask me the other day why I don't use this to fill up the hole. And here's why. Okay? You just don't have hardly any side strength whatsoever with one of these little backhoes. So I, I can't I can't push it. I'm trying to push it to the side here. You can't do that. Again, your solution is not going to change the capacity. Okay. And we are running at stock pressure here. That's one thing I don't think we mentioned in the lip saw that portion. We're running at about 2100 PSI. That's right. So somewhere between 2000 and 2100 is stock. And that's what we're running. Wow, this thing is amazing. to control. 
control. I see exactly what you're saying now. It's, it's overall easier to control because you can do the multiple functions at the same time. That's right. There's no unexpected stopping. I did not expect that. I expected it to be more jerky. Something else I found, that rake function you just did right there, that's a pretty common need to yeah. rake stuff in, it's almost impossible to do at stop flow. Okay. Because you, you're just yeah. doing this. Keeping, keeping your bucket at the same height while pulling right. the, the whole thing towards you is a, right. it's a problem in the hole, it's also a problem. I, I actually think that's why they put the float on that boom so you could potentially do that, but it's really not heavy enough to rake it again. Yeah. Because you don't see a float function on heavy equipment, backhoes. I believe I'm able to fill it in much easier like this. You know, as I started this out, I said I couldn't do it, and here I've been doing it ever since. Right. But, well, that's uh, what I find where I would have turned around and used the bucket. I'll go ahead and do it with this because it's fast enough and I can control it better. Yeah, always before it's been too slow. Yeah. And, and it has been easier uh, to keep from gouging. It's, it's real easy right there like that to yeah. gouge. Uh, especially with those teeth, it's just so easy to gouge. Let me try it again. Now that I'm thinking about it, I probably won't be able to do it. Okay, let's put the uh, loader on, and I'll finish filling it in with the loader. Ah, I didn't have it as full as I thought. I'm running about 2300 RPM now. And the loader just, it's got a, you know, it just feels responsive. Um, a lot of times, if you really are in a hurry and you, you want to use this little loader, you about have to run a wide open throttle when you're in the stock hydraulic configuration. You know, that's okay. A lot of times I run that way, but it sure is quieter and more relaxed feeling to be able to run your tractor a little slower. And this is just, it's just a nice function. I, I really uh, almost feel like I should have dug it out again just to try the loader more. Two functions at once. Let me go full throttle a little bit. Takes a little more practice. You know, you get used to, you know, over-exaggerating these valves with the stock configuration, but you can actually feather them a little more with this configuration. Yeah, once you practice just a little bit, you can feather it pretty well. It just takes a little bit of a different, different feel because you do have so much more flow. Well, Kevin, we've given it the once over, um, run the limb saw really well, the backhoe really well, uh, the loader I could run at lower RPMs and just didn't feel like the tractor was screaming. Um, I mean, I really like it. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see. We've, uh, we've actually uh, tried to see if we, if, if we can get an official statement from Deere on the warranty. We don't have that as of yet. Uh, if and when we get that, we'll put that in a comment. That we'll pin that in a comment below if, if Deer gets back to us on a on an official right. stance on the on the warranty. Uh, really, the only issue now that I've I've tested the steering and I don't see any issue with the steering. The only issue I could possibly come up with would be one of heat, and we've discussed that. I I, I understand. Um, why people would be concerned. I also understand why we're talking maybe just not a huge percentage right. of increase. So 
I, you know, I, I think we've got something that's worth considering, and uh, I, I, I really like the work you've done. It's, it's quite creative. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah. So again, hydrosplus.com. That's right. And, um, you know, this year you just, you just can't tell about supply issues. You have some supply. We don't know what the future holds. It That's depends right. on uh, some of the demand. We, we, there is a limited supply right now. You may see this and it may be a month's wait or you may see this and decide you want one and be able to get it next week. We, I, I just can't make any promises there. Same is true on the pricing. You guys have been uh, seeing this on all the products we deal with as well as just all over anything you buy, you don't know. I mean, even a two by four, we can't promise what a price is, can we, this year? So <laughs> Not this year. So go to hydrosplus.com, you'll see the different configurations. It works. It does. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with, with Tim. Tim. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on... Am I supposed to say this with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't prepped. <laughs> see, nobody is prepped. We just, we I, just I, I do it. I almost did it. I almost did it. And, and I, I was thought, like, wait. I paused because I thought, he's not going to He's not gonna say it. Well, I, 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 I didn't know if you wanted me to, so I was <laughs> like... <laughs>